What's up guys, Sam here. Welcome back to another merch design video. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make this warrior statue t-shirt inside of Photoshop. This was another design that I made recently for a client, so there will be plenty of useful tips for you guys in this video. Before we hop into Photoshop, I just wanna say a massive thank you to everybody who picked up my first brushes pack. The response was absolutely incredible guys, so thank you so much for that. If you haven't had a chance to check out those brushes yet, then the link will be in the description below. They are free and we are going to use them in this tutorial. So here we are once again inside Photoshop and I'm just about to cut out this picture of a warrior statue that I found. I think it was from Unsplash. And I'm firstly going to rasterize the layer, which is going to open up the quick actions tools on the right, which means we can now use the remove background button. So if you don't see the remove background button in your Photoshop, it's probably because the layer isn't rasterized. As you can see, it's done a good job. However, I can see a few bits it's missed. So I'm just gonna go in with a black brush and remove some of them white bits. Remember that the remove background button applies a layer mask to the image, which means we have to use a black brush to remove any extra bits and a white brush if we wanna bring any parts back again. So now the image is cut out nicely, I'm just gonna duplicate it and turn it into a smart object. Remember to name your layers, guys. I know it's annoying. I'm really bad at doing it. I do try, but half the time I do just forget and then actually forget what the layer is in the first place and just have to try and work it out again. So it's a good habit to build. After that, we're gonna apply a gradient map to the whole canvas. So no clipping mask, we just want it to be the top layer. And you might be thinking, why don't I just turn the image black and white? Well, this actually looks better. If you experiment with both, you'll see that there is a difference. At least in this scenario anyway, I think it looks better on the statue. And next up, we're gonna add some levels and we're just gonna try and get that image to pop a little bit more. Maybe darken it a little bit, bring out the highlights. You know what I'm saying. So now I'm just gonna resize our boy here just because I realized that there's no room to put his new hand and a sword which is what we're going to add into the design now. So this is a 3D object from Envato Elements, which means I was able to turn it and twist it and get it at the right angle I wanted, just so it would look realistic when I tried to replace it with his current hand. You may have noticed that I imported the hand underneath the gradient map layer. So the hand comes in black and white straight away, so we can see if this is actually going to work or not. So now I'm just going to apply a layer mask to the new hands and we can remove that wrist portion and the arm that's come with it because we don't want that. He's already got an arm. We just want the fist and we want him to have a fist because he's going to be holding a sword. So you may run into this problem as well if you have clients where they request something and you really can't find a good enough picture to use. In this case, they wanted a warrior statue and I really wasn't happy with any of the free options I had. Even Invato Elements didn't have that much options. So I had to find the best one I could, which was this one, and then modify it like we're doing now. So now I'm gonna add a levels adjustment to the hand and then we can try and match the contrast of the statue to try and composite it a bit better. I'm not too worried about it looking perfect just because I know I'm going to add torn edges and grain as an overall effect to the statue and that will cover up any of the imperfections of the composite. I actually think I did a pretty good job though. It's just the thumb that's gonna be a bit of a problem. As you're gonna see now, I'm gonna use the spot healing brush to try and hide the thumb and it doesn't really do a very good job but it's actually gonna be good enough until we apply the effects which will kind of cover it up and make it look a lot better. Next up, we're gonna bring in the sword from Invato Elements, which was also a 3D object. So I was able to get it at a rough angle. And I'm just having a little play around until it looks like it's in the right place. And then I'm just gonna apply a layer mask to the sword and then using a black brush, remove some of the handle so it looks like it's sitting in his hand. And then the same again as with the hands, we're gonna add a levels adjustment layer to the swords to try and match the contrast with everything else. I actually decided on a whim to duplicate the sword layer so I can have a little bit of extra control of the handle of the sword. So I'll remove the blade and then add a extra levels adjustment layer just to the handle. 
just so I can bring out a little bit more of that detail that got lost previously. So that's the main statue down. So now I'm going to put all the layers into a group and name it so we don't get confused and then duplicate the group and then using that new duplicate, turn it into a smart object. So now we have one nice tidy layer for the statue, but we also have the old group just in case we need to go back and change anything. From here, we're just going to go up to filter and then filter gallery. And the two effects we're going to apply in filter gallery are torn edges and grain. And we're basically just going to mess around with the levels and see what looks good. looking good but I decided to add just an extra levels adjustment just to make it a little bit darker it come up looking a little bit too light for me you may not be able to see it if you're watching on a mobile but on my monitor it looks a little bit I wanted it kind of pitch black if you know what I mean it was kind of a lighter black so now we're going to add in our text the font I end up using I will put on the screen because I can't pronounce the name properly and I don't want to butcher it to add the arch I'm just going to press ctrl t right click and click warp and then select arch lower and then drag that bottom point up and that will create that nice little arch at the bottom of the text but keep the top straight. Then I'm just going to flick through my fonts until I find the right one which like I said I will put on the screen so you can find it if you want to use it. To make up the background for this design I'm going to use clouds and lightning which are both brushes from Envato Elements and I'm literally just going to play around have some fun experiment and see what works. I'm going to keep all the brushes white for now, just so I can experiment with the colours later on. So the client actually sent me a picture roughly of how they would like the sky and the lightning to look. So I'm going to do my best to accommodate that. And I'm going to use a mixture of adding a color overlay to the clouds and also play around with some outer glow on the lightning. I left the text really basic, I just added two strokes, one really thin black one and then another much larger white one to match the actual colour of the text on the outside and I think it gives a pretty nice effect without going too far. I also changed the little Roman date at the bottom to outlines by removing all the fill and then adding a stroke and that's how you get that kind of outline text effect. I then just mess around with the layout a little bit more because I think I just mocked it up quickly just to see how it looked on a t-shirt and it looks a bit weird the top text looks a bit too high so I just adjust that and I also need to fade in the bottom of the horse and then we are pretty much there apart from adding texture. So to add texture to the design I'm going to use one of my free merch design brushes available in the description if you want to check them out and to apply them correctly we're just going to put all the layers into a group apart from the background. And then we're going to apply a layer mask to the entire group. From here we can just select the brush we want to use. I'm going to use the grunge brush and then we can stamp the design. And then I'm going to take away some of the harshness by changing my brush to white. And then stamping out some of it which will get rid of it. Apart from a revision at the end that's pretty much the final design guys. 
So when I sent this over to the client, everything was okay, apart from he wanted the design to be less bright white and make it more gray. So that's what I did. And in this version that you can see, all the text and the statue is a little bit more of a gray than a white. And that was the only thing I changed. So that is the finished design. As always, guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more merch design content. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.